The fastest, easiest, and cheapest way to assemble a subwoofer enclosure is with brad nails and wood glue. The wood glue is the most important part. It's what actually holds the enclosure together and seals the gap between the seams. The brad nails are just there to hold the wood together while the glue sets. I always start by connecting the front and the back of the enclosure. And what I like to do is grab some clamps and use the clamps as extra hands while I drive in my brad nails. As the enclosure starts to take shape, the clamps become a little less necessary. Hi, I'm Justin, the DIY Audio Guy. This is the second video in a two-part series on building an enclosure for a Dayton Audio Max X 10-inch subwoofer. In the first video, we did all the woodworking, and in this video, we're gonna assemble the enclosure, we're gonna put some carpet on it, give it a test bump, and see how it sounds. Now that I've got the back attached, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the sides. When it's time to attach the sides, you gotta be real careful to keep the surface with the grooves on the outside of the enclosure. These grooves are there to help us carpet the enclosure later. I'm gonna use a piece of scrap to make sure my pieces are all lined up properly. All right, so at this point, it's beginning to look like a box, which is what you want when you're making a box. You want it to actually look like one. It's, uh, it's really hot, <laughs> I'm sweating. Uh, I live in the South and it's not so much hot, the humidity is very high and uh, it's not pleasant always to work outside in that heat, but that's okay, it's just part of the game. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the port 45. Okay, so these are my 45s and what I've got is this one is, is labeled that is the port 45. You gotta make sure that the port is not gonna be smaller at the corner. You don't want it to be, uh, you don't wanna choke off your port right in the middle of it. And so the regular 45s for the corners are, can be a little bigger. It really doesn't matter what size they are, uh, but that corner 45 in the port needs to be a little bit smaller, so it's a different size. I'm gonna pop in some shorter brads so I don't poke a hole through the side of the box with a brad nail. I'm also gonna add a corner 45 to the port assembly. This is complete overkill, but that's okay. To position the port, I'm gonna take this two inch piece of scrap and put it over here where the port's gonna be. I'm gonna use that to make sure that my port assembly is lined up properly. Then all I have to do is line up the port wall and the brace with the front of the enclosure. And as long as my cuts are accurate, my port should also be accurate. I slather on some glue, I clamp it down to hold it in place, then I drive in some brad nails. If I had a superpower, it'd be the ability to drive brad nails in the wrong place. That happens sometimes. I try to be careful, I try to mark lines. I was using the clamps as my guide, but let me show you right here how I fix that. I use this guy right here, it's my magic eraser, so I can just erase that nail sticking through. All right, so what I've gotta do next is attach the baffle to the enclosure, and when I do that, I'm gonna glue everything up and drive my brad nails, and I've gone in and I went ahead and I marked some lines on the box so I know where my braces are and where the edges are so I don't drive brad nails randomly into the enclosure. Before I put the top on, now is a good time to go ahead and cut a hole for the terminal cup. For the top, I do the exact same thing I did for the front of the enclosure. I'm gonna lay the top down, gonna mark out a bunch of lines to make sure I know where to drive my brad nails later, and then I'm gonna slather everything up with glue, and this is one of those times when it's okay to use way too much glue. After this top goes on, it's gonna be virtually impossible to get back inside the box to try to seal anything up, so you don't want any gaps in this situation. In order to pull everything together nice and tight, I'm gonna throw on some clamps as well, and while the clamps are there, I'm gonna drive in my brad nails and then pull the clamps off. The brad nails will hold everything in place until the glue sets. Now I'm gonna throw a flush trim bit into my router and I'm gonna trim out the port. Off camera, I attached the outer baffle and I trimmed out that port as well in addition to throwing a 45 degree chamfer bit in my router and put a little chamfer around the port. I wanted to do something a little different 
I wanted the port to really pop and I wanted a little bit of blue to peek out around the edge of the driver. So off camera, I spray painted the baffle and the port blue. I find it really helps to put down a couple of coats of primer first because the MDF can really soak up the paint and then finish it with a clear coat with a lot of sanding in between. Well, what do you say we put some carpet on this box? Uh, carpeting a subwoofer box can be really difficult, especially if you've never done it before. It takes a little bit of practice to get good at it. In my opinion, the most important thing you can do to make it easy for you to carpet the box is to use a knife with a good sharp blade. I recommend that you use a utility knife so that you can just take the blade out and throw it away and just go ahead and be prepared to stop a couple of times through the project and take the blade out and toss it, especially if you're using like these cheap blades from Harbor Freight. So when I get done with this stack, uh, I'm never gonna buy one of their blades again. I'm a big fan of this one right here. This is an Ulfa is the brand. And what I like about this one is it's got this tip on the end that you can use to help wedge carpet into grooves and gaps. Now this is a snap blade and I like that a lot because you can quickly easy snap off pieces. Now this type right here is not my favorite type at all. And the reason why is because you've got to grab a tool in order to change the blade. There's a sliding mechanism inside of it that you've got to clip the blade into and it's just generally kind of cumbersome to work with. But there's a trick to this one right here. It'll really speed your productivity up a ton. Let me show you that trick. I like this style right here. Uh, it folds up for safety, of course. And what I really like about this style is you just have this button right here on it. And all you've got to do is press that button and you can pull the blade out. And the blades, of course, you can just turn them around and put the other side in. And so that's you know, much more efficient. I'm using Loctite spray adhesive and I just follow the instructions. I find that it really helps to spray everything down twice to get a stronger bond. I'm not particularly happy with this product. I need to start using something stronger. After the adhesive gets tacky in a couple of minutes, you just bond the pieces together. This part's kind of easy. just realized that I forgot to do something important. I usually like to go here to the baffle where I've got some paint and take that off so I don't get any adhesive on it so I don't accidentally stick the carpet to it. So now I've got to stop my, my carpeting and uh, get the tape out. So sometimes things get done out of order and that's just how life goes. Now that that's done, I can carpet the front of the enclosure. When I was building the box, I made sure to route a groove on the underside of the outer baffle. This serves as a guide for the knife as I trim out the carpet. I did the same thing when I routed out the port. One of the tricky parts is wrapping the carpet around the back of the enclosure. The goal is to hide the seam. I'm using a scrap piece as a straight edge and I have some wax paper to keep from getting adhesive on the carpet. If I could go back in time, I would have put some tape down. I would have taped that wax paper to the carpet because the wax paper kept trying to slide on me. So it really didn't do any good. And because of that, my seam wasn't 100% perfect. So I'm going to need some more practice, which means I get to build more subwoofer boxes. In a previous video, I showed you the planning and cutting process. In that video, I routed out some grooves in the side panels. I use that groove as a guide for the carpet. I start by pressing the carpet into the groove and then cutting the carpet. After installing the driver, I grabbed my multimeter so I could set my gain. I need 40 volts at four ohms in order to set my amp to 400 watts. I have a video showing you how to do that. I'll give you a link to it up here or down here or somewhere. I wanna see what this driver can do. So I'm gonna give it some extra juice and switch to oscilloscope mode to verify that I'm not clipping. Now it's time for the test bump. I think it sounds pretty good. The loud bass causes my mic to clip so it sounds distorted to you here on YouTube.
I did notice that at full tilt, I was getting a little bit of a rattling sound. And that's when I realized I made a mistake when I set the gain. My head unit has a base level control on it and I had it set to 10 out of 15. On this particular head unit, you want that level control all the way maxed out when you set the gains. I was pushing the driver too hard, causing the distortion, and I may have been clipping as well. When I turned the level back down, the rattling sound went away. So this driver got some unnecessary abuse, and other than the distortion, it seemed to handle it just fine. I couldn't smell any smoking voice coil or any other sign that I damaged the driver. So I think this thing's pretty durable. I'm impressed by that. If you'd like a copy of the plans, you can find them down on the merch shelf. I'll also put a link in the description. Go ahead and click on this playlist so you can see the rest of the videos in this series. And before I go, I wanna say thank you to all the guys who support me on Patreon with a special shout out to $25 patron Dylan.